Let me start with you, if I may, uh, Dr Vergano. Italy has been at the absolute hellish epicentre of this now yeah. for, for a few weeks. How bad has yeah. it been? And when you've looked at a country like the UK, for example, what, what warnings would you give us that perhaps we're not uh, heeding enough at the moment? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. I, I think uh, we are very similar. Uh, and uh, Italy uh, has been struck really hard in some regions, uh, Lombardia and the area around Milan. And uh, I live in Turin, and um, we, we are uh, some 10 days behind the Lombardia, and we learned a lot from our colleagues and friends there. Uh, because uh, you, um, what I can say now is that really you, uh, it's difficult to, uh, to raise awareness in the population and, and even your, uh, your own colleagues uh, uh, to what extent uh, this uh, epidemic and this emergency will change and reshape your hospitals uh, mm. uh, once uh, you, you, are, uh, you are facing the real emergency, like a tsunami coming. And it is surreal that uh, you see your neighbours that are already sinking and uh, still uh, you think that you may not expect uh, that intensity uh, with overwhelming patients uh, and uh, your hospitals there are nearly collapsing. It Italy, so, Italy has the second highest rated health system in the world. So we're yeah. not talking about a, you know, a bad health system by any means, but it, it's mm -hmm. given an appearance of being almost run over. How bad has it been at the sharp yeah. end for the Italian it, health workers? It's been bad, really bad. And uh, uh, please consider that the, 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 the first region that was hit by the epidemic in Italy uh, was Lombardy, and it is the re richest region with a lot of uh, um, large uh, leading teaching hospitals and uh, the, probably the same uh, epidemic in another region, maybe in southern Italy, would have uh, had uh, really uh, much worse uh, uh, result. Thank so you. they are making huge efforts in order to increase their hospital uh, capacity, ICU beds capacity, so they have task forces working 24 hours per day transferring patients, coordinating hospitals, uh, and we are doing the same. Mm. But uh, it's really, really hard when you have patients that double uh, in less than three days. So we, you have 100 patients now, intensive patients, and in three days from now you will have 200 and then 400 and then 800. What has been the reaction in Germany to what is going on and how does what Germany has been doing compare to the UK? Well, I think, like in a lot of places, probably, um, the reaction has been quite split. There are some people who take this very seriously, who are very worried. I mean, we now have basically um, a kind of, you know, lockdown light. We have most shops closed, uh, schools, gyms, museums, theaters, operas. Um, so, so life has changed. I mean, like people have said, this is the new normal, apparently. Um, and at the same time, there's a lot of younger people who seem a little bit less concerned. Um, of course, they are at a lower risk from the disease, but they might be spreading it. Um, but so there's a lot of discussion uh, here about, you know, how do we make everybody kind of, you know, take this seriously in the, in the same way. Um, can we just bring in Dr. Rinesh Palmer, who uh, represents doctors uh, in this country and is a frontline medic, of course, himself. What are your fears, really? Because there's this online petition set up by a junior doctor saying, hang on, we've got to have medics who are testing vulnerable patients. They're in hospital for a reason. They're unwell. They may have coronavirus. We may have it as doctors. We don't know if we're passing it around. And that, that psychological pressure on doctors must be enormous, never mind just, you know, the, the practicality of it. Absolutely, Ranbir. Uh, good morning. Uh, doctors across the UK have been speaking to us about their concerns regarding this. Uh, we've seen uh, the petition started and um, thousands of doctors have spoken out about the fear that uh, they uh, should be self-isolating, um, potentially even for a small cough or a cold, uh, and that would prevent them going to work. If testing was rolled out, uh, as uh, has been alluded to earlier this week, then we could see doctors, nurses, all healthcare staff tested, ensure that they're negative so that they can come back to work quicker. Without doing that, this will really cripple the health service. If we are self-isolating for seven to 14 days, depending on symptoms, um, we really will not have the doctors and nurses on the front line that are desperately needed to look after our patients. I want to ask Hillary a question. A lot of dentists are coming online saying, we're here, we have big teams, we're medically trained, 
were available to help, most people will be putting off going to the dentist for routine stuff, certainly in the next few weeks. Why can we not, any reason not to utilise dental teams now in the front line of this? No, absolutely. They have a great deal of expertise. They can certainly do jobs which are clinically appropriate, and it's great for them to offer that. I hadn't heard that. That's, yeah, that's a lot of news. dentists. Yeah. Um, um, can I just ask Rinish Palmo another question, actually, just about uh, personal protective gear as well? Because in the absence of routine testing and regular testing for all medics this week, you know, it may come in at some point. We'll, we'll ask Stephen Bartley later. Um, that's another issue, isn't it? There just seems to be a lack of protective clothing uh, for medics. What, is, what are they telling you about what, what that is doing to their, their, the way that they can do their duties? Doctors, again, have been writing to us at the Doctors' Association uh, with real, real concerns, uh, both within hospitals and uh, particularly amongst GPs. Uh, GPs have written to us saying that uh, some of them haven't even received any personal protective equipment this despite uh, the NHS chief executive yesterday saying that the NHS is well prepared and has adequate uh, personal protective equipment to deal with the pandemic. He alluded to some sort of distribution issue and doctors across the country are saying to us that they're not receiving it. And when they are, uh, sometimes it's, it's shown as being out of date. Uh, sometimes it's the inappropriate personal protective equipment. And in some instances, even in hospitals, um, they've run out of masks and they've had to move to an alternative mask. And so uh, they're having to retest all the staff on the front line to make sure that the new masks that they are providing uh, are fitting them.